The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Monday, August 17th, 2015. Hello and welcome in to eBible Fellowship Questions and Answers Time, where you can interact with us with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker, Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Monday Night Question and Answer program. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Bible with any questions or comments that anyone may have, and each person is invited to share what's ever on your mind by contacting us in one of the ways that were mentioned, and we'll be glad to take your call, and I'll try to respond as much as possible by going to the Bible. Before we begin, I'd like to mention um, the track trip to uh, Lima, Peru, September 8th through the 16th. Uh, we, we need to know um, quickly who is going so we can get uh, the, the airfare tickets and hotel and everything established. So if you're interested in going, please um, send an email to eBible Mission. Oh, what is that? Uh, send it to um, uh, ebiblefellowship at juno.com. I can't think of the other address right now, and I'll just forward it. ebiblefellowship at juno.com and express your interest in going on that trip. And uh, also, if anyone is interested in sponsoring someone, you can send a note to ebiblefellowship at juno.com, letting us know that. We'll try to get in touch with you as soon as we can. Okay. Um, at this point, we're going to begin by going to the first person on the phone tonight. Welcome to our Monday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, a few weeks ago on the news, the same-sex marriage was accepted in many states. And our president was approving of this. He was saying, love has overcome. And it's not love at all. It's just blatant violation against Romans 1. Even the president is in agreement with the world, which is all proofs from the Bible that these are the end times. Well, you know, the, uh, the president is the president of a nation of the world. And... And prime ministers are, are uh, prime ministers of nations and kings or kings of nations. So it, it's the government of the world. And uh, the world has a tendency to, um, it, 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 it uh, emotionalizes um, God's law. Or, or the world looks at the law of God. And the law of God is very direct and, and, and very clear. Thou shalt not kill. And the mind of man immediately goes to work. How do I get around that? And they start coming up with scenarios. Well, uh, all right, uh, uh, you say we're not to, um, or there shouldn't be abortion because thou shalt not kill. But what if the mother's life's in danger? Or what if there's rape? And what if, and what if, and what if? And there, th that's the way man's mind works. He tries to find the loophole. He tries to get around the law. And that, that saying about the edge of the wedge is, uh, is very fitting. When th that's exactly what um, the enemies of God do with every doctrine of the Bible. Of course, there is no crack in in the Word of God, but they're looking. They're looking for a way around, and they think they can they can spot uh, a weakness, and and they just want you to um, to allow. For that one area 
just let them get that little edge of the wedge. That's all they normally, typically, that's how it begins. Just a little crack, a little entry point, and then they can fit their their wedge right there and then comes down the hammer and before you know it it's just cracked wide open same thing with marriage and divorce oh uh, yeah. god and, and and they start to play on emotions and oh uh, and they come up with the worst case scenarios can you imagine a wife in a situation that, that's as terrible as anything and you're going to say she must remain married, and oh, how awful that is. God's a loving God. God wouldn't permit a wife to uh, remain in that kind of situation. And, and it's the same thing when the Bible says, if you're divorced, you're not to remarry. Uh, now, come on. You know, um, here, here's a person and how lonely they can get. And and after all, their marriage wasn't a good marriage. It was a bad marriage. And, and they were young when they got married. And just excuses, excuses, excuses to yeah. justify sin. That's what people do with everything. Everything. Justify sin. Uh, I'm going, I want to do what I want to do, but let, let me try to justify it. Let me try to... Uh, um, show how God's law didn't take into um, consideration everything. It, God didn't take into consideration that, uh, that people are born gay or born homosexuals, and after all, they feel that way. And, and if they love another person, then how can it be wrong? And, and yeah. it's the same thing with fornication or adultery uh, to people they really care about each other and love each other. And so how can it be wrong for them to come together outside of marriage? Marriage is just a piece of paper. Just it, 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 it really is um, astounding how similar the attack always is. I guess if it works, uh, you know, why, why change it? It's the way the world goes about removing the the law of God. Of course, the law of God's never removed. They're bound to it. Every unsaved person is married to the law of God, and every transgression is adultery against the law of God that that brings the penalty of death. But but as far as the outworking of these things in the world, it, it's it's typical that uh, people try to rationalize and justify and excuse and and come up with man's wisdom, man's yeah. reasoning that uh, just happens to go completely contrary to God. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, we're so smart and, and we're so wise, uh, you know, we're... We're especially today, we're really enlightened. We're the enlightened generation. Well, if we're so smart and so wise and so enlightened, why are things so chaotic and such a tremendous mess yeah, yeah. everywhere? Why is the home, the, the home, the marriage institutions, the shambles that has brought uh, tremendous uh, anguish to children? Children are a mess. They're into drugs and alcohol and into crime at, at early ages. And everything's a mess. But man knows better. Man knows better. Oh, he knows more than God. And it's, it's just the pride and arrogance of yeah. the sinner that has produced all this. And then he turns around and blames God. He, he turns around and says, look, God, look what the world you made. Well, no, this is man's doing. This is yeah. the result of rejecting the, the truth, rejecting they, they uh, the wisdom lie. of God and, and, and preferring our own wisdom, and, and this is the result. But thank yeah. you for calling and sharing.
And Thank let's you, go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Monday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Thank you for taking my call, Mr. McCann. And I'm sorry to sort of be on the same topic. And it's 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 because of my lack of understanding, not because I um, I disagree with anything. I'd ask about Ezekiel 36 and. Uh, uh, felt that uh, the God's uh, spirit within us causing us uh, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments uh, would be um, uh, 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 some form of assurance. I, I believe uh, if, if, we're, if we're right and October 7th is our date, uh, we'll never know. What, if, we're, if we were not saved, the form, you know, there's no thought in the grave, and if we are, the former things are forgotten, and the only thing that I can see going into eternity would be the Spirit of God in us. And the verses that I found that helped me understand um, were in Ephesians 2, uh, 12, uh, you could go 12 to the end, but 12 and 13. Um, I I came out of such a strict uh, a Bible background. We didn't have TVs. We, 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 you know, people were uncomfortable if they were fat. I mean, you, we were we tried to really, really obey. But we had uh, I, I could, until I found you people. I had no idea what salvation was. I had no idea of comparing spiritual to spiritual. So uh, if, maybe I'm putting too much weight on that. Uh, that understanding, but I mean, it just makes you hungry for the Word of God. I, well, I don't know. Uh, what, uh, can I ask um, in Ephesians 2, 12 and yeah, 13? 12 and 13. Yeah, what, what, what are, um, are these verses related to assurance? Uh, uh, these verses are uh, stating that without God's Spirit within us, we will not understand comparing spiritual with spiritual. Oh, okay. And I and the separation of the sheep, the, the the sheep on and the goats, which is the period of time that we're in, uh, the goats are gonna uh, at at some point this they they will not ex- accept uh, the spiritual teaching of comparing. Uh, well, well, let's see what it says in Ephesians two, and um, verse twelve, that at that time you were without Christ. Being I'm sorry. I'm aliens. sorry. First, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's First Corinthians two. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh sorry. okay. In um, twelve so and thirteen, First Corinthians yeah, I was two. In the, yeah, I was in with be made new in the attitude of your mind, and uh, and it was still. Yeah, I'm a little slow here. First Corinthians. <laughs> That's yeah, okay. Two. First Corinthians two verse twelve. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And uh, this is, uh, of course, true. This is the problem when you have the Bible that's a spiritual book and and God hides truth. uh, he, He hides it throughout the Bible. And in order to come to truth, you have to um, be able to spiritually discern the truth. But when natural men, and a natural man or a spiritual man, you know, uh, just to make it simple, the spiritual individual is somebody that's saved. That uh, we're, We all start out natural, that is limited to the physical realm because of our sin. We're dead spiritually, so we have no access no no seeing, no hearing, no life in the spiritual area. But once God saves us, he grants us access into the spiritual realm. And, and of course, we, we also remain in the physical. So the child of God is now really 
has expanded um, his understanding, or God has expanded it. Uh, before he was limited to the physical, now, uh, due to salvation and and the working of the Spirit of God, he's granted access to spiritual things. He can now see spiritually and hear spiritually because he has spiritual life. And now when he comes to the Bible, uh, another way of looking at this is, is the Bible is a lamp and, and now he has the Holy Spirit. He has oil in the lamp that enlightens the Bible. And, and so now when the spiritual minded person, the saved person, comes to the Bible and follows God's methodology of comparing Scripture and, and is carefully trying to find truth. And, and God, um, you know, God really helped a lot of us with Mr. Camping for 50 years on the radio teaching people all over the world, here's how it's done, because the Holy Spirit taught him, and then God gave him a platform, and he was able to expound and, and instruct the people of God. And, and so we have many people that know how to find truth, and many people that can see the truth because they became saved, and God gave them spiritual sight. And, and so they hear teachings that God had hidden or sealed up till the time of the end, and they understand them. Sight, or to see spiritually, is very closely related to understanding. The wise, a wise man's heart discerneth time and judgment. He sees it. He understands it. But the wicked understand not judgment. They don't see it. They don't understand it. Not the time of it, uh, in many cases, and not the nature of it, because spiritual judgment. The, the people in the church didn't understand the spiritual judgment on them because it had to be spiritually discerned. And the people of the world don't understand a spiritual judgment on them for the same reason. It must be spiritually discerned. God's people see it. They understand it. And, and so they take action as a result. And, and they follow the, the teachings of the Bible in, in those areas and whatever they see, they're following. But the natural man is limited. The atheist is limited, and so he demands, um, show me, prove to me there's a God. Well, God's invisible, God's spirit. And, and, the, and the atheist is a natural man, limited by God to physical things, to the physical realm. And, and so he has no eyes to see spiritually or hear spiritually. And, and, and so you can talk to them and talk to them about the things of God, doesn't understand, doesn't see it. He wants proof in the one area he does understand. Show me physically, show me something material of substance. And, and of course, well, God says that, um, uh, what's he say in Hebrews 11? But this is speaking of a spiritual substance. He says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's foolishness to the natural-minded man, the atheist, as well as um, the man in the church who's unsaved. And, of course, the man in the church, it's more difficult uh, to, um, to see that he has a natural mind. You can clearly see it with the atheist. The atheist is uh, very out front and, and open. He, he'll tell you right away, I reject 
spiritual things. Well, the man in the church also rejects spiritual things, but it, it's much more deceptive on his part because he speaks of a God, and, and God is spirit, and he speaks of faith, and, and faith is the evidence of things not seen. And, and so it, it's a little bit harder to determine that he's a natural-minded individual until we get into the doctrine of the Bible. And, and uh, the natural-minded person, well, he reads of Israel— he thinks Israel. He reads of Judah. He thinks Judah. Uh, he he sees Old Testament history. He he keeps it in that category. Old Testament history, or or he uh, he he sees Jesus speaking to the disciples. Well, that was Christ's conversation to the disciples. I tell you, I I've um, had some experience in sitting under some professors that that sadly I think had this kind of a mind and they make the Bible so dry so dead so natural they'll they'll go into the historical detail in, into some morality into some uh, grammatical points and and you could fall asleep in a second the, the child of God just Oh no, oh no, this is the Word of God, it's living, and it, it's full of life, and, and yet the natural man has to deal with it, and, and he cuts it up, or, or he handles it naturally, he teaches others to do the same, and, and that's a large part of the church's problems, they, they teach things um, that you should not um, spiritualize. Many churches teach that. Don't spiritualize. Well, what are they saying? Keep it natural. Keep it natural. And it, you wonder, have they never read 1 Corinthians chapter 2? That the Bible's spiritual. And, and the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh, and, and so when doctrine comes forth as um, the, the child of God follows the biblical methodology of comparing spiritual with spiritual, scripture with scripture, and, and God opens up information, well, uh, almost always it's rejected by the natural-minded individual. And... And uh, they, uh, uh, they, they just don't see it. They don't see it. And they, they think we're jumping around. Stay in context. De uh, the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthians of the first century. They want to go to the history books. They want to go outside the Bible and find out the audience that the Apostle Paul was speaking to and what was going on in the minds of the Corinthians in the first century, which is totally irrelevant. Uh, it, it means nothing. It, it's of no concern whatsoever to the Bible. We stay in the Bible. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for thank you. Uh, calling in and bringing up those verses. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Monday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Good evening. Good Am evening. I? We can hear you very yeah. well. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. McCann, this is uh, I haven't been following you. I haven't been following your teaching, but I understand you have another date. And uh, my question is, you use uh, Revelation twenty, Revelation fourteen and twenty to sixteen on the fellows. Yes. And I'm trying to see how do you get those fellows in today's, and I have one more question. Well, yeah, that's a good question. And yes, uh, eBible Fellowship, after studying for some time, uh, God has opened up information concerning a date. 
and the date is October 7th, 2015. And one big reason why we go to October 7th is the verse that you're referring to. Let me read it in Revelation 14, verse 20. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And that's sixteen hundred furlongs. And first of all, we see the context of Revelation 14 is Judgment Day. That's very clear from um, early on, uh, from verse 10 all the way through 20. It, it's Judgment Day, Judgment Day, Judgment Day. And it's based on other biblical information that we have learned Judgment Day began on May 21, 2011. That's when God transitioned from the judgment of the Great Tribulation, which was upon the churches, to the time after the Tribulation, and he expanded the judgment to include all the nations of the world, all the unsaved people of the earth. And we've been wondering and searching, how long will the judgment continue? And this verse, in this context of Judgment Day, gives us a number of 1600 that fits extremely well in the biblical calendar of history. Now the question is, do we have biblical justification for reading about furlongs and understanding it to represent days? And, and yeah, we take question. that question to the Bible, and in the Bible we find that uh, furlongs, of course, by itself has nothing to do with time, and yet when we search the Bible, we find in Genesis, in the uh, account of Joseph, when he interpreted the butler and the baker's dreams, that that uh, one of them dreamed of having bat three baskets on his head, and, and uh, the other one uh, dreamed of uh, branches, three branches, and Joseph interpreted the baskets and the branches to represent three days. Now, br uh, baskets and branches have nothing to do with time, just like furlongs. But in the interpretation which came from God, three baskets represented three days. A little later, in the uh, life of Joseph, Pharaoh has a dream, and then a second dream. It's doubled to him, and Joseph is called to interpret the dream, and in one dream, there were seven fat cows swallowed up by seven skinny cows, and another seven uh, um, goodly ears of corn devoured by seven uh, terrible or ill-looking ears of corn, and then Joseph said, the dream is one. The fat cows, seven fat cows represent seven years, and the skinny cows that devour them are seven years. And likewise with the corn. And, and again, cows and ears of corn have nothing to do with time. Yet, yet it's the Bible. And in the Bible, God speaks in parables and so he assigns meaning to these things that have to do with time. And, uh, you know, you, you never know it. If you searched out cows or ears of corn, uh, there's, you, you never find any other information that relates them to time. But God did it. God did it. And in Psalm 39... In Psalm 39, it says in uh, verse 4, Jehovah, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth 
and mine age is as nothing before thee. In these two verses, um, the statement is made, Jehovah, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. There God is joining together the end with the word measure. And then um, in verse 5, days is a hand breath. A hand breath is a measurement. Furlongs is a measurement. And so when we we look through the Bible and and we look at all these scriptures where God is relating non-time um, uh, things to time, like branches and baskets and cows and corn, and he does oh, tie days yeah. to a measurement in Psalm 39, then that gives us biblical authority or or justification to say, all right, now what if the furlongs represent days? In other words, we're permitted to do that by these other things that God has placed in his word. It permits us to ask that question. And when we do make that substitution, we find tremendous harmony with the biblical calendar of history because the great tribulation was 23 years to the very day may 21 1988 it began may 21 2011 it concluded and it was 8400 exact days and and since that time we've been wondering when will god complete the judgment and here we're given a number 1600 that when put together with the 8400 days of the great tribulation forms 10,000 days and the number 10 in the bible points to completeness and uh, 10,000 is 10 to the fourth power it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 and and so it's the furthest extent in view as well as completeness and it, it just fits uh, perfectly with the great tribulation judgment and now here's a time period with a number that God has given us in the context of judgment day that brings uh, us if we follow it to a 10,000th day and then when we follow that 1600 days and land on that 10,000th day well, what do you know? It happens to be the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the last day of harvest. And the context in Revelation 14, from verses 14 through 20, is harvest, Christ putting in the sickle in the day of judgment. And, and Matthew 13, 39 tells us the harvest is the end of the world. And, and here is harvest and 1600 days from that point of may 21 we come to the last day in the hebrew calendar of the feast of harvest as well as the last day of tabernacles which identifies with the last day of the end of the world my second question hello yes please hello? go ahead uh, can you read Matthew 5, and kind of explain it to you, listen, and I hang up? Matthew 5, 37? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for calling. And it says there, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Well, <laughs> that's the, uh, I, I wonder if. Uh, that's trying to tell me something after going into a long explanation. But we know that, uh, you know, the, the Bible is to be expounded. It is to be explained. But, but what God is saying is, uh, concerning our communication, let it be direct, straightforward, and let it be sure. Let it be definite. And, and that is, um, judgment 
is to make a determination when when God says in first Corinthians chapter six that know ye not that the saints will judge the world well in judgment we make a determination and and that's what uh, is in view when you say that something is yea or something is nay that is this is true or this is a lie it, it's making a determination and and so God gives us his spirit he gives us wisdom to make determinations concerning the Word of God he he grants us understanding he uh, grants his people an ability to hear his voice and uh, do we do we just uh, walk in the middle like straddle the fence and and we're not sure well how long will someone be in that position they're not saying yay and they're not saying nay they're 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 just continuing and, and why is it they're not sure well more than likely they're not putting in time into reading the Bible and checking things out and they're not going to the Lord praying for wisdom if if we're unsure let's go to God and ask him for insight and wisdom oh Lord what should I do and and it God will often help us and and in as far as uh, granting us understanding in in what to do or what to say uh, he gives us sound speech so we know to say yes and we know to say no but thank you for bringing up that verse and I would like to thank everyone for joining with us tonight uh, we have come to the end of our time thank you especially for all the Bible verses we had an opportunity to read and consider uh, Lord willing we'll have another audio question and answer time this coming Friday at the same time but during the week on Facebook all are welcome to join our Sunday open Q&A group that eBible Fellowship operates um, and you can leave a question or comment in that group at any time and uh, we we have open periods of responding uh, each day around 12 to 12 30 p.m. but for now I'll say good night and may the Lord's perfect will be done. And thanks for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. You can join us for these Questions and Answers sessions Sunday afternoon following Sunday studies and Monday and Friday evenings following the Monday and Friday evening studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.